It's time for the season of love. Valentine's Day is coming up and I wanna share some pics from my eyeshadow palette collection of palettes that give me the Valentine's Day feeling. Hello and welcome if you are new here. My name is Rachel and if you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I have 15 palettes that I've pulled from my collection. Some are just like blatantly Valentine's Day palettes that were themed for Valentine's Day. Then I have a handful of ones that have that pinky mauve color story that remind me of Valentine's Day and I wanna share them with you today. I'm gonna link all of the palettes down below in the description box that are available and everything that is on my face will also be in the description box and let's get started. These are in no particular order and of course, as I'm going through these palettes, I would love to know your thoughts on them as well as any other Valentine's Day recommendations that you have for me or for others in the comments, please leave them down below. Like what are some of your Valentine's Day palettes that you love? Let's start off with some mainstream stuff. I have mostly indie, obviously. If you've been here before, that is my favorite thing in the world. But the first kind of couple that come to mind are the Natasha Denona Love palettes. I have the Midi Love and I have the Mini Love. So let's start off with the Midi Love. This was one that I bought, I actually bought it 50% off. It was 50% off at Sephora, I wanna say two or three years ago, maybe two years ago, right? Probably came out three years ago. And I like this palette. It's not my favorite Natasha Denona palette, but of course it has the vibes of Valentine's Day with pinks and reds. We've also got a couple of pops of purple. This silver shade blind is really, really pretty. I just think that Natasha Denona's shimmer formula has come a long way since this midi palette has been launched. The shimmers are okay. They're pretty standard metallics, but I like her little extra sparkly formula that she's come out with in the past year maybe in her palettes, but I do like the mattes in this. I like the color story. I think it's really pretty and I keep it around because I like it still, but actually of the two, I prefer the mini. I love this mini. When this came out and I bought it, it was one of my favorite mini palettes from Natasha Denona. And I would say of all the ones I have, I have quite a few. This is probably in my top seven to be very specific. I love when her mini palettes are laid out in a way where you have everything you need, or at least I have everything I need. I have a transition shade. I have a deepening shade. I have two options for a lid shade and I have a inner corner highlight. This shade right here is really pretty. It's a little bit more of like a duochrome topper, which I think is really, really fun. And I just love the looks I get out of this. I love how it's set up. The shimmers in this are pretty and the mattes are great, of course, like they always are. And I just love how cohesive this little color story is. I'm pretty sure neither of these are available. And like I said, I'm gonna link things that are available, but I do want to incorporate things that aren't available anymore, just because if you have them in your collection, maybe you can pull them out or you can shop your stash and recreate looks from palettes that are similar. So another one of my like most favorite mainstream eyeshadow formulas is Patrick Ta. I think he does a phenomenal job and yes, his stuff is expensive. Okay, I, I hear you. But this is the Major Dimension 2 Rose palette. I have his original Major Dimension, which I used the crap out of when I first got it. And then when I saw he was coming out with a rosy version, I was, I was in it. I was like, yes, please give it to me. And I think this palette is even better than his first palette. I did not buy his all matte palette, which I talked about recently in a video of like, am I having FOMO or not type of thing, which I can link down below releases that I skipped on and I'm not gonna buy it, okay? I don't need it, but <laughs> I like this because I love the gradient from light to deep in my mattes. I love having a gradient of light to deep in my mattes. These shimmers are really pretty, a little bit more on the toppery side, a little more textured, which isn't always my favorite thing, but these I think are done well in a way that they are very, very like, just sparkly and really pretty. We have two cream shadows, which I really like the cream shadows from Patrick Ta. It's definitely an elevated, luxurious palette. And I really love the formula. Like the mattes especially are very buttery, very blendable, absolutely gorgeous. Now, of course, while I'm going through this stuff, I picked out things that I think are kind of quintessential Valentine's Day, but you can wear whatever you want at any time of the year. You don't need me to tell you that, right? 
I hope you know that. But these are just ones that, you know, are very Valentine's Day themed in my mind. One of my other favorite mainstream palettes in my collection is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. Everything from the packaging to the formulas of this is just glorious. So packaging is really pretty. It has like these iridescent features that make it look like a quartz. Huh? And then on the inside, we have a really pretty mix of neutrals as well as some cool toned pinks, a couple of like purple pops as well. Absolutely beautiful. Again, formula wise, mattes are great. Blendable, not super pigmented, but very easy to use. And the shimmers in this are just so stunning, sparkly. Some of them are actually duochromes. And I remember trying this when it came out a couple of years ago and thinking, wow, for a mainstream palette, especially this this shimmer formula is really beautiful and some of the best mainstream shimmers that I've personally experienced. I love this palette. I haven't used it in a long time. It's something I might want to take out during this time of year. And if you have it, you should consider doing that too because I just love the formulas. Now we're going to get into the indie stuff. This next palette kind of bridges the gap between indie and mainstream in my opinion, but I believe Sigma is technically an indie brand. So I have the new mod mini. This was my very first Sigma palette. And I remember, first of all, getting it in person and seeing how like tiny and like travel friendly it is. I love a little travel friendly slim palette. I love it. And then on the inside, again, this is laid out in a way to me that is so user friendly, easy to create looks, light to deep in the mattes with two mid tones, three different shimmer options, one of which is a duochrome. I love the formula of Sigma. Their mattes are really easy to use. I would say not like the super silky mattes that you get from some brands. They have a little bit of grip to them. So you can build them up and to make them look pigmented or true to pan, I should say. And their shimmers are really pretty. I don't want to say dry in a bad way, but they are a little bit more of that drier formula where if you are prone to creasing, you're probably not going to have an issue with them. And they're just really pretty standard metallics that look gorgeous on the lid. I love this color color story. It's so beautiful. All of the looks that I create with this palette, I think are just beautiful. And again, I love how travel friendly and slim it is and how cute it is, how adorable it is. This is a great one for Valentine's Day or just any time, let's be honest. Let's talk about some actual like true Valentine's Day themed palettes. So I have the Nomad Verona Amore Immorte palette, and this was their Valentine's Day release from 2023. I almost said 2022. Who knows what year it is? I don't. And I think this palette is so fun. This is the first time that they, <laughs> I always have to hold it like this when I'm showing it on camera. I really enjoyed the design of this. I thought it was kind of fun and interesting where it's the love and death theme. We have the love theme on this side, which is your typical like pinks, reds, that kind of color story. And then we also have the death side. So we have this side, which is a little bit more dark and sultry and cool toned. I actually prefer this side, if I'm gonna be honest with you, but I just really like how different the sides are. Of course, you can combine them together or completely use them separately. I did receive this one in PR and I do have a, a code with Nomad, which is Rachel, it's affiliated. I thought this was a really fun release. I love the packaging. Now I will say for the only thing I don't love about this palette, I think the shimmers in this are at least on my palette, are pretty hard pressed in the pan. So they are a little bit harder to pick up. I use my finger 97% of the time when I apply my shimmers. So I can get in there, but they're just pressed a little bit harder than usual. But I really love the color story. The mattes are just really good, usual Nomad mattes where they're pigmented, blendable, easy to build up. And I just love the whole theme. I always love Nomad themes. They are a destination-based indie brand and they always theme their collections around destinations around the world. So this one is Verona in Italy. And I just, I love the whole vibe of this palette. I think it's wonderful. And if I'm not mistaken, this is currently on sale on their website. So if you've been thinking about it, it's a good time to pick it up. I'm gonna skip to what's on my eyes. Now I've only used this palette once, so I can't speak to the quality of every shadow. This this isn't a review video, by the way. This is me just like pulling things out. I, I just love talking about eyeshadow palettes. If you're new here, you're gonna hear about eyeshadow palettes a lot. So this is one that I bought very recently that 
is the Valentine's Day palette for Bella Butte Bar of this year. This is the Dead Roses palette. <sighs> They're quickly becoming one of my favorite brands. Their mattes especially are... I'm speechless. Very pigmented, but blendable and easy to use. Those are my favorite words put together in a sentence. So I love the cover and I love this kind of theme. Again, actually when I swatched this out on my arm, it has a similar color story to the Nomad Verona palette, but I definitely think in terms of formulas, they're very different, of course, packaging as well. But color story wise, it did actually look similar to the Nomad. So this is what it looks like on the inside. We have pinks and reds, of course. We have some pops of purple. And I love this anti-Valentine's Day take on a palette. And this is the palette I used to create my look today. And I went with more of like the darker purpley tones. And just like the Nomad, you have kind of two separate sections of the palette you can play with, of course, mixing them together. Now, I've only swatched this palette apart from this shimmer here is the one I used all over my lid. All the rest of the shimmers I have not used yet, but there are some multi-chromes in here. The one that's on my lid is a multi-chrome and it's like liquid chrome. It is just like super smooth, so dimensional and beautiful. And some of like the duo chrome shades, and I've had this experience in the past with, with Bella Butte Bar, they're a little textured, which is not my favorite formula. They're a little almost like gummy feeling. So I, I'm gonna have to play with them on my eyes before I give you like a final review. And if you are new here, every like four to six weeks, I test a batch of palettes that are new to my collection. And then I give you my final thoughts in a ranking style. So this will show up in a ranking in the future, but I will say color story wise, beautiful. Matte so far, beautiful. The multi-chrome on my lid, beautiful. And I just love an anti-Valentine's Day theme. It's kind of fun and different. Let's go to one of my favorite brands ever. I have three palettes from the brand that I want to talk about, and this is Unearthly Cosmetics. Uh, I believe one of them is not available, the Surrender palette. This came in their Valentine's Day mystery box last year, 2023. Again, I almost said 2022, what is time? I love neutrals, okay? I like color too, but I love neutrals. And so when I opened this palette up for the first time, I thought, wow, this is one of my favorite color stories from the brand because you have a whole bunch of neutrals, but of course you have those quintessential pops of red and pink for a Valentine's Day theme. Now I will say the shimmers in this are their old formula. I feel that they have improved their shimmer formula since this palette. And so like the palettes they've come out with in the past, I would say eight to 10 months have been just phenomenal in terms of their shimmers, but their mattes have always been good in my opinion. I really, really enjoy their matte formula and I love this color story like I've already said. We have a couple of duochromes in here, a couple of standard shimmers, a good mix of textures, just stunningly beautiful, a really good like neutral palette with a twist. Then we have their, I believe this was their Valentine's Day theme for 2022, like actually 2022. <laughs> I can say that now. And this is the sleepover palette. If I'm not mistaken, the last time I checked, this may have been on their sale tab on their website. Their palettes come in and out pretty quickly, so I'm not sure. I love the artwork on the front. It's very playful and fun. And then we have this stunningly beautiful, it's Valentine's Day, but it's not the typical reds and pinks, although there are a couple of pops of pink in here, but we have a lot of burgundy tones, berry tones, purple tones. I love the shade Laughter, this duochrome for the inner corner. It's like a white to a yellow gold. Love, love, love that. And these are just really, really beautiful tones. I've created some beautiful looks out of this palette. Again, this is the older formula, the one that I have in particular that I bought a couple of years ago or a year ago, whatever. I bought it when it came out. So it's definitely a different formula than their newer palettes, but color story wise, beautiful. And I love like the artwork and the theming. And then one that I bought a really long time ago, but I've only recently gotten to using, and I've, again, I've only used it once, is the Unearthly Cosmetics Strawberry Milkshake Palette. This is such a fun, Again, I would say it's leaning Valentine's Day, but we also have some pops of yellow and green, which is a little bit different than anything I've showed you today. Older formula, so the mattes are just really good, pigmented, easy to use, very good mattes actually. And some of these shimmers are a little bit actually on the drier side, a little bit more of a standard metallic. But again, if you are prone to creasing, you might enjoy that. They do have this on their sales site the last time I checked. 
And I don't know if it's the old formula. I'm assuming it is. Even though it is the old formula, I still really enjoy the look that I created from this recently. And a lot of you commented on it, which I appreciate. Thank you so much telling me that you liked my look. And I just love a red and pink palette that has like pops of other colors in there. It's not so monochromatic, but of course you can create monochromatic looks from this. And another palette that's very similar to this in terms of color story is the Glamlight Berrylicious palette that was in collaboration with Strawberry Shortcake. And this was also released last year. Again, reds and pinks with a row of greens. My favorite part of this palette are the greens. I feel with some of the reds and pinks in this that when you use two or three of them, they kind of blend together and look almost like one shade, you know? And that is one of the troubles with reds and pinks, at least that I've used in terms of matte uh, in my experience. But this was one of the first Glam Light palettes I ever bought and ever used. And I remember thinking, these shimmers are so good. Glam Light has, I would say, one of my top five favorite shimmer formulas ever. They are just very smooth and sparkly. That is my favorite type of formula, smooth and sparkly. I don't care for a super textured shimmer. I don't care for like a heavy shimmer that doesn't have shine. Like smooth and sparkly, I'm there. And these shimmers are smooth and sparkly. We have some duochromes. We have some beautiful tones. And I think they did a great job with the shimmers in particular, putting in different options. There's not any repeat shades in here. They all look different on the lid. So this is a really, really good one. And then speaking of Glam Light, we have their Valentine's Day release from last year, which was the Chucky Crazy in Love palette. I love horror movies. I love all their horror theme collections. I think they do a great job. I'm gonna be repeating myself with like theming. Whenever I talk about Glam Light, their theming is spot on. And this is to me another anti-Valentine's Day grungy type of color story. Completely different than anything we've talked about today. Quality wise, I think this palette is so incredible. I believe this came in, in my top 20 palettes of last year. And I'm not like a huge gray cool tone lover, but I, feel like every time I created a look with this palette, I was like, wow, wow, okay, you did something glam light. Shimmers are smooth and sparkly. Mattes are pigmented and blendable. I definitely wish it was maybe one or two lighter mattes in here, but that's okay. I can work with it. I can pull in other things if I need to, but love the quality of this palette, love the theming. It's fun and different for a Valentine's Day theme. All right, next up I have the Glaminatrix Cosmetics Rich Romantic Palette. This is the only palette I've ever tried from the brand. It was a brand I've been eyeing for a really long time, waiting for that release that would call to me, I mean, the nearly neutral or nearly natural palette. I missed out on it, I'm having FOMO. I don't wanna talk about it, okay? This one, I also love, I love the packaging on this with the faux leather. I think it's super luxurious. And then we have the pinks and purples. We have some reds. We can create a neutral look with this. I did actually just recently put this in my monthly palette ranking. It is fairly new to me. I bought it at the end of last year. It launched at the end of last year. And I was just finally able to get my final thoughts on it. I think the mattes are really good. Easy to work with, blendable, not overly pigmented, just right in the middle pigmented. And the shimmers in this are very sparkly, smooth and sparkly. We have quite a few like duochromes in here. My only gripe with this that I would change is many of the duochromes have like a green shift to them, which is not like my favorite when it comes to this color story. But I will say like quality wise, Mattes and shimmers are phenomenal. You can get some like pinky red, neutrally leaning looks, even some peachy looks. It's a beautiful palette. It's a really beautiful palette. And it just kind of reminded me of Valentine's Day. Not as blatantly as some of the other ones, but it was giving me the vibes. The next palette I wanna talk about is the Warriors Wear Pink Palette from Gourmand Girls and Siria Soto. This was launched in the fall of last year and the word pink is in the title, so I had to include it. But apart from that, we have a lot of like heart embossings on the pan. We have pinks and reds, and I love how matte heavy this palette is. There's only four shimmers in the entire palette. And Gourmand Girl mattes are really nice, very user-friendly. They're more of a silky texture, so they don't have a lot of kick up in the pan. They don't have a lot of fallout. So they're really easy to work with. You do need to like build them up though to make them look like they do in the pan, but I really enjoy the formula of the mattes. I love that there is a matte black. I love that there is this like 
iridescent duochrome. They usually put an iridescent duochrome in their palettes. And I just think this is a really fun, different color story that was giving me the feelings of Valentine's Day. Now this theme is breast cancer awareness because Siria Soto, she is a Instagram content creator and she is currently fighting breast cancer. I think it's beautiful. I love the messaging behind it. And it's definitely something that gives me the feelings of Valentine's Day. And then the last palette I wanna talk about is one of my newer palettes. Again, I've only used this once, so I have to continue using it to get my full thoughts. But this is the Wicked Widow Beauty Love Sick palette. This did come out this year for Valentine's Day for the brand. And they have done a few of these like smaller little eight pan palettes in the past. And I think they're so cute and fun, very travel friendly, very just like, I just love a small palette. I already said that. I love the artwork on the front with these two cherubs that are all covered in tattoos. It's cute. It's cute, I love it. And then on the inside, we have this gorgeous color story. Now I will say this is by far my favorite color story that Wicked Widow Beauty has ever done. I think it is so beautiful. And me as a neutral lover, this leans more neutral, although it is like muted pops of color. We have pinks, we have mauves, we have just like this really beautiful brown that has a like kind of a pinky undertone. And then we have different pops for the lid, all of which are duochromes. Stunning. Wicked Widow Beauty's formula is really good. Their mattes are just easy to use. I would say a little bit more on that silky texture, like I was saying with Gourmand Girls. Um, now, one thing, again, I've only used this once, I have to continue using it, but I will say, I feel that these shimmers are a little bit drier and crumblier than I'm used to from the brand. I feel in the past, their, their shimmers have been really like smooth, like very, very smooth without a lot of texture. And some of these do feel a little drier. So keep that in mind. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on your preference. Uh, some people don't like a very, very creamy shimmer and I can understand why. So I'm continuing to use this, but I'm definitely pulling this out for this time of year and enjoying it, of course, for this time of year. So I will keep you updated on my final thoughts, but it is a very cute Valentine's Day palette. All right, and that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment down below letting me know some of your favorite Valentine's Day palettes. Is there anything that you're planning on taking out at this time of year? Or do you just wear whatever colors you want at any time of the year? Let me know that too. Are you someone that doesn't theme their makeup to the seasons or to the holidays? Let me know your thoughts because I love hearing from you. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. I do upload videos weekly and I'd love to see you back on my channel again. I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.